Go ahead. Brian Johnson isn't a sentimental guy. In fact, you have to really look in Brian's home to find evidence of his past life, an incredible career in journalism, all of it at Como. In his office, there is a framed proclamation of Brian Johnson Day, celebrating his 53 years at Como. It was signed by the mayor and the entire city council. Beautiful. There's a small glass award celebrating his 50th, and then there are the two Como jackets okay, still hanging <laughs> in his coat closet. Do you ever wear that? No. <laughs> That's why I took the patches off. <laughs> I mean, who the heck wants to be recognized? <laughs> At 87 years old, Brian is enjoying his peaceful retirement. He's unplugged all right, but he is never disconnected. Do you, are you on TikTok? No. Are you, are you on Twitter? No. <laughs> then how do you get your news besides the newspaper? Do you go online at all? Yes. I do go online, but no, I do not belong to Facebook, TikTok, Meta, X, any of them. Did you catch that? I asked him if he's on Twitter, Facebook, and he TikTok, replied he's Meta, not on X. X any of, of course Brian knows. He's on top of it. When Brian Johnson joined Como in 1959, Como Television was just six years old. He was young, but his delivery was polished. Governor Rosalini of the state of Washington has Reporting on the growing metropolis of Seattle in the early 60s before color TV was mainstream. Obviously, our health and welfare must be protected against the harmful dirt and poisonous chemicals being discharged into the very air we breathe. That's the top of the news from throughout the Pacific Northwest. For the first two decades, Brian delivered the news on Como Radio. For in the present case, it seems to me... His television appearances were for commentaries. This was the week of the spotted owl non-decision. People tuned in weekly to watch Viewpoint, a weekend commentary show, keenly aware of his two very different responsibilities, radio reporter and TV commentator. But you tried to know your own biases and eliminate them to make your reporting as fair as you possibly could. Because if you did your reporting balanced, people forgave you your commentary. It was a different time. Brian took on significant debates of the day, like the best way to design public transit for a growing city. One way to approach this subject is to begin by asking what physical shape we would like the Seattle metropolis to assume, say, 20 years from now. In the 1980s, Brian moved to TV news full-time, and he covered some of the biggest stories of the decade, the eruption of Mount St. Helens. Got in a small plane and headed down there, only to have the plane fill with ash, and we had to cruise into the Portland International Airport with the motor dead. We just barely cleared the fences around Portland International Airport. But above that level, there is just one tremendous blue. After a harrowing start, he eventually got close enough to report on the natural disaster. There was the Wami Massacre, Seattle's deadliest mass shooting in which 13 people were shot and killed at a gambling club. There was the great Thanksgiving weekend storm of 1990 that sunk the floating bridge. And the wind is blowing here, and that's one of the big question marks. But there are signs tonight that at least here, all was not normal. In 95, Brian covered the worst loss of life in Seattle fire history when four firefighters were killed battling a warehouse fire set by arsonist Martin Pang. We have learned that the reception was not canceled because of fear of what was happening on the street. In 1999, Brian reported live from the scene when the WTO conference finally got underway in Seattle after violent protests. 1999 was Brian's 40th year at Como, and he had no intention of slowing down. I will quit the day I don't feel that my legs are strong enough to walk the city streets. The veteran reporter chased big stories. Boy, you are something else. He pursued politicians, asking people in power tough questions. Politicians, we like to know what you're going to ask us ahead of time so we can give you the canned 30 second answers. We can be evasive. Uh, <laughs> you're never going to be ev evasive with Brian because he doesn't give you a chance to do that. Why should I? 
Why should I ask a politician an easy question? I am not his lackey. I'm not his flunky. Brian took his job seriously, but never himself. And if I can do it a little bit of humor, that's a plus. They say the air around here is so smoky, it's not safe for people over 65. 65? I'm out of here. The story coming up. He loved to use humor to hook viewers into serious subjects or stories with no video, a reporter's nightmare. The defendant just took off from courtroom four and raced out the back door with people in pursuit. No assignment escaped Brian's injection of wit and wisdom. I tell those I meet I've never seen Star Wars. None of them. Horrified, they try to set me straight. I need your help. It's the greatest story ever told no no that's the Bible uh, you know when you look back Brian what did you personally enjoy the most people meeting people having the opportunity to I never really regarded it as a job and I think that's really the key to this industry is don't regard it as a job Brian, what do you think? Kathy, that's a lot closer than anybody really thought of. Brian's wealth of knowledge, Murray, developed after decades of covering Andrew local and state Norm politics, added depth to Como's election coverage year after say. year. Hey. <laughs> On his 53rd year, Brian retired only when, as he promised, his body signaled it was time. My hearing started going. And at that point, when, when you have to struggle to understand people, it's time to hang it up. I remember your whole so here we are, back in the home Brian shares with his lovely wife, Peg, surrounded by framed photos of their favorite people and a gorgeous view of the sound outside. I enjoy cooking, primarily, and getting together with a few friends that still exist. <laughs> Brian loves this relaxed pace and chuckles at the constant reminders of his former life. And tell me that doesn't look like a Como logo. An exceptionally long career. <laughs> yeah, I was 76 when I finally retired. I'm, I'm, yeah, maybe I could run for president at that age, but, <laughs> but be a reporter, no, I don't think so. <laughs> that he and we are incredibly proud of. Mary Nam, Como News.